Hey guys, what is going on? Welcome back to another video. Today I have a, a couple things that I want to get accomplished. First of those being removing the molds that I made in the last video. So that's what we're going to start with first. <laughs> that all of this foam and clay and stuff is stuck in here, but... Right, guys well I've been working on these molds for a little while now I cleaned up the edge and uh, one of the things I did was I took some tooling gel coat in this little bottle here and I used that uh, to be able to fill in any like weird gaps that I have in my mold now for some reason I don't know why it does this but when I've been making molds I have like a single area where it bubbles up and it doesn't adhere and then it creates this really thin layer of gel coat um, and so I have to fill those areas in if you guys if you guys know why it does that comment down below because I'm, I'm really curious because uh, I have no idea why it would do that in one area and not another. Um, and I'm, I'm spraying the entire thing with PVA, so there should be no like chemicals on there. I'm not touching it afterwards. So I have no idea. Like I said, comment down below if you guys know. Um, but yeah, so I took the gel coat in the, in the bottle, squeezed it into those areas, and then I used some tape, some uh, masking tape to be able to flatten it out. So that way there's not like a lot to, to sand down. So if I peel this off, it should be nice and... Flat. It's still kind of curing, but it's almost there. But um, but yeah, so I'm just gonna finish uh, peeling this this masking tape off so it can cure, um, and then I can sand it down, and then I can get molds or uh, parts made out of these molds. Um, and then the other thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and work on cutting the inside edge of both of the fenders, so that way they follow the inside edge of the the actual fender on the car, um, so that way they look better and look cleaner. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that uh, while this is curing.
Alrighty guys, so I'm halfway through my part making process. I've got, you know, PVA and gel coat on there. Um, I'm about to start my lock layer, so I'm gonna mix up some resin. Um, other things that I've done is uh, cut the inside edge of that front uh, passenger fender. I did the same thing to the front driver fender, just not as much now. Um, I've still gotta continue to shape the outside edge of that, but. So I'm gonna go ahead and mix up my resin and start my lock layer. All right guys, well those parts are now curing, so what I wanna do next is go ahead and work on my e-brake boot. Um, so before I did my shift boot in that uh, Alcantara-like material, I have my e-brake boot here. Basically what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut the material, the leather, off of the plastic ring that goes into the car. Then I'm gonna copy the pattern from the leather and then just sew it back together. So I'm gonna go ahead and get to cutting this off um, and then I can start working with getting the pattern down um, so I can sew a new one. All right, so I'm just gonna sit here and pull this leather off. They're just glued on here, and with this uh, piece being so old, it doesn't stick very well anymore. All right, so now that I've got my leather pulled off of my plastic piece, the next step in this process is to pick a seam uh, to cut down so that way I have a template. Now on my uh, shift boot, what I did is I used all the OEM seams, um, and so I have four seams going up the middle up into the shift knob. Um, while that's great, it, it's a really time consuming. So what I'm gonna do with this one is I'm gonna try to cut one seam. So on the inside of the e-brake boot, the part that you never see, there's a single seam that pulls the two pieces of leather together. I don't know if you can see that very well, but anyways. So I'm gonna cut down that seam and then I'm gonna lay it over a sheet of that Alcantara type material and I'm gonna use that as my template and then what I'll do is I'll just sew it back together. Um, and I should have a single piece so it'll actually remove these two seams in the back here which, I mean, they're great and all and I would like to do that, um, that tri-stitch on them but for right now, I, uh, I wanna keep it clean. I wanna keep the, the shift boot as the focal point. So I'm gonna go ahead and uh, pull the seam apart. Okay, so I should have filmed this, but I, I realized that I didn't have the camera on. Um, so basically what I did is I did everything that I was gonna do, but I did it on a scrap piece of material. So I have this like canvas type material that um, I, I basically did the whole set the material on top, uh, did a chalk outline, cut it up, and then boom, I have this piece now. Um, the reason I did that is just to, to double check myself. This material is really uh, inexpensive. I think it was from Walmart and it was like a couple bucks, and I got a lot of it. So I can, I can do it multiple times. Um, but anyways, so I took this and I basically pulled it up to the top, made sure it was good, set this here, pulled it up the top, made sure it was good. Um, now all I have to do is take this same piece and lay it on top of my good material. Um, so now that I know that it works and I don't waste any of my good material, and then all I will do is take the two ends, sew them together. Now the, the hardest part of this is gonna figure out where to sew them together. So that way it's the right amount of material that goes around here. If it's too bunched up, it's gonna look weird. Um, so I'm gonna have to clamp it down with my handy dandy clamp clamps that I have. 
And then from there, once I know how much material needs to go around it, I can sew at that part, go all the way up the, uh, the e-brake boot, and I should be good to go. All right, so the next step in this process, now that I've got the piece sewn together, is to take it and glue it to my plastic piece. So what I'm gonna do is flip it right side out, and go ahead and stick this plastic piece around it, make sure I'm good to go. All right, so now that I've got the fabric pulled around the plastic piece, the next step is to take my glue and run a nice thick bead um, between the plastic and the fabric, and then clamp it down with the clamps that I've got. That way um, it has time to cure, and it'll stick on there, it won't come off. All right, so I'm gonna let that sit for a little bit and then I'll come back and add more glue. All right, so now that that's all glued down, it's still kind of curing, but I'm just gonna stick it in the car and let it cure inside the car because um, then that'll kind of flatten all the pieces down that need to be flattened. Next step is to zip tie the e-brake handle to the boot, so I'm gonna do that real quick. I'm just gonna take this. All right, that's done. Now just pull it through. All right, so let's go install it in the car. All right, so just gonna slip this over. It's like the worst part of doing the e-brake is getting it back on. All right, so that is it right there. I'm pretty happy with that. It sits down nice and tight and smooth. Pull it up and you're good to go. Very cool. All right guys, well that is gonna do it for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I'm super excited because the next video I will be pulling parts out of those molds. Um, I didn't get as much progress done on the front driver fender as I wanted to, um, but I figured if I spent more effort trying to get those parts done, that would be worth it and better content for you guys and less uh, less boring. Then the other thing I did was get that e-brake boot done. I've been wanting to get that done ever since I did the shift boot and I think it turned out really well. Obviously I didn't do that tri-stitch on the e-brake boot as I did on the shift boot just because it took so much time. I didn't want to invest that much time into the e-brake boot uh, because it would take away from wide body progress. Uh, so I can always go back and change it if I want to but for now I think it looks awesome. I think it ties together really really well. So anyways like I said if you enjoyed the video make sure you give it a thumbs up. Also if you guys have not already make sure you subscribe to my channel that way you guys can see when the latest videos come out for more progress on the wide body kit other DIYs that I do and um, future progress on the 335 because I want to get to work on that and if you guys want to follow me on Instagram you guys can do that the link is going to be in the description box down below I post pictures of my car uh, things that I'm working on other DIYs that kind of stuff so you guys should definitely check that out also make sure you guys check out my sponsor Turner Motorsports um, they sell a lot of great uh, performance parts but also they sell OEM parts and stuff for BMW so you guys should definitely check them out if you guys have a BMW they are the place to go also I will link the glue that I use in this video uh, down below that way you guys can check it out if you guys are doing uh, covering your armrests or doing your shift boot or e-brake boot it's a really great glue to use and works really really well with the fabric and plastic or whatever you're doing but that's gonna do it like I said I hope you enjoyed the video I will see you guys in the next one have an awesome day